Hey everyone, this is uh, week 27, uh, day 4, this is Thursday, and this is our ongoing Spoken Paintings week. Remember, a little bit weird, a little bit different, doesn't matter, it's a, it's a week, you know, why not take chances, it's just 5 days of this. <laughs> so, let's give it a shot, we're not gonna miss anything. Paintings, remember, we're gonna be able to see the paintings uh, on Saturday, so no worries. It's not like, you know, they'll unlock if they're bought. Like, that would have been so cheap. Like, hey guys, if you want to see the painting, you have to buy it, and then when you buy it, we can unlock it. Then we would be like an EA video game. We're not that. So, you know, we're not that cheap. Uh, <laughs> no, we're gonna show the paintings on, on Saturday. And, um, and the coolest thing, and there's no objective way to do this, uh, is to see, you know, how that compares, how the paintings, the, the, the physical object compares with whatever you guys uh, had imagined. So, uh, I think that that's the most awesome thing. I don't know how to, we can, you know, quantify that. I don't know how to objectively measure that. We can't. Reality is we can't. Because we spoke with Danny, we were like, oh, that's so cool. And let's have people, let's ask of people if they can actually make a painting, you know, if, if, you know, after I describe something, if they can actually make a painting. But, but, you know, we were speaking with Danny, but that's also so tough because what we're asking really is for, you know, people to have, you know, something constructed in their imagination and then to be able to visually translate it into paint. Hey, that's painting and painting is really hard. It's almost impossible. <laughs> so many times the idea of a painting we have in our head when we try to materialize it through paint. Oh my God, it's like that's one of the toughest things in the world. So we, can, we can't just like haphazardly say, hey, you guys, whatever you imagine, just paint it. You know, like it's a one-to-one -one thing. Just spit it out like a printer. No, no, we know that that's super tough. If people want to do that, again, glorious, hallelujah. That would be amazing. But I acknowledge that that's something that's very tough. But the way you can actively participate, because this would be, you know, like an active participation also, would be to just, you know, you know, during this video, close your eyes and just imagine something that I'm, you know, see, see what comes up when, when I describe something, when I use my words in an attempt to try and verbalize what I painted. See what shows up in your head, you know. <laughs> That's probably shaped by your own experiences. I, I don't expect you guys to imagine a painting that I would do, which would be weird. It's probably like the idea of painting that you have in your, in your head that's kind of constructed by, you know, tons of definitions that are just inherent to you as a human being. So, uh, chances are it's like absolutely improbable. It's, it's just absurd to think that anyone could ever imagine, you know, my painting. Uh, but that's not the game. The game is just to put all of these ideas, you know, together and, and put them right next to that painting. And I'm sure that if we were a big enough collective and we would all be doing this exercise, it would be so cool. Like they would feel like they belong to each other. I think that in a very, very kind of global way, they would feel like they are together. They are one thing together. That would be amazing. That would be absolutely amazing. But again, we, we have no way of, of seeing how that will work. So anyways, uh, let's get to it. Day four. So today's painting, oof. I thought I'd be, you know, you know what I'm trying to do? I'm trying not to reference other painters, by the way. If you've seen it, and I have to almost bite my tongue uh, throughout all these descriptions, I don't want to give you an idea of what I did based on other paintings. I don't want to give you like visual, you know, kind of clues that have to do with some other thing that you could just um, imagine immediately because you have that visual cue and you just say, oh, I know what that painting looks like. And you said it looks like that. So I can now make, um, I have like a reference point. Um, no, I'm trying not to. I was, I was about to just describe my painting in terms of another painter. And I was like, nope, 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 don't do that. Um, so I, I painted Danny again. Um, and for this painting, I was like 
I want to speak about light. Uh, and light in the sense of something that can be physical. I, I think that after last week, you know, our one room week, where I really, really felt that this is not like a religious experience. This is not like I can feel the spirit. No, this is, I literally felt, you know, the, 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 the physical material quality of that light in that bathroom. The, and the light in the bathroom is, is, you know, it's not weird. It's just light. It's a, you know, halogen bulb. It's even just one because we had one in the shower and um, because of quarantine, it, it just uh, died on us and I haven't been able to buy it and change it. So, uh, so we only have that one light and it's just this heavy atmosphere. I don't know how else to describe it. It's just this heavy presence of light. You know, you really acknowledge that there's this physical quality of light in there. And it's not, this is not something that is just happening in this bathroom. It's not like this is a magical bathroom where, you know, light bends in some weird ways in there and just feels strange. No, no, no. I think that that bathroom was just a reminder of the physical quality of light. And um, in this painting, it's Danny. She's wearing one of her sweaters that has, it's a hoodie. So she has her hood on. Um, and we only get sun in the mornings, like at around 7.30, maybe till 9-ish in the morning on a very, very nice day. We'll get, you know, a bit of light coming. This is east for us, where my hand is pointing. So we'll get, you know, that little bit of sunlight here. It actually kind of stops, you know, where I am. That's, that's all we get, uh, that kind of stream of light. Um, and, and when she's here, when she wakes up, she kind of like rests and she puts her hoodie on because, you know, it's direct sunlight. So it can be kind of annoying um, for your eyes. And, um, and she was wearing that, her, her hoodie and it's a, it's a white hoodie. So, so she looks very kind of monk-like, you know, in a way. Uh, and, and obviously, um, because the light comes from above and because, you know, our portrait has this very specific shape, our head has this very specific shape, our nose kind of juts out. That's why many times we, if we're wearing a cap or if we're wearing like a hoodie, what we see usually is that one shape that kind of juts out. I actually love that. That, that is, um, you know, I, I always loved that about um, sculpture. The fact that all these like uh, classical, you know, uh, Greek and Roman sculptures they don't have their noses a lot of times, or even like the Sphinx in Egypt just lost uh, uh, its nose. And it's because it's such a fragile shape that comes out that anything that bumps into it just, uh, you know, it, it, it just makes it this incredibly, incredibly um, kind of, you know, almost expendable shape that you just say, oh, I lost, lost the nose. You know, that was bound to happen. It's this little thing that comes out that is just out there you know, and, and, and it could be, um, it just, it could be damaged by anything. And I, I, I acknowledge that fragility of the nose. I broke my nose playing uh, football, soccer, in the most horrible way. And it was like the most painful, like instant, I think in my life up to this point, it was just absurdly painful. My nose, it covered my eye. I remember that when, when I broke it, but anyways, um, so it's this kind of nose and this little bit of the upper lip just coming into light. All these shapes that come out, they come out into the light. And I loved it. I was like, yes, this is, this is about the traveling of light, the traversal of light. You know, I always try to imagine light as a river or as a waterfall that doesn't care about the way we denominate things. When light is hitting my portrait, it doesn't care if something is called an eye or a nose or a mouth. It just travels through it. It just travels directly through it. it. It is describing things in its path, but it is almost relentless in its path. It's, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't want to stop. It just goes through everything. So I think it's very beautiful and in many ways also like very, not violent, violent in the way that we could just try and rationalize this force of nature that it goes beyond our understanding. I mean, the, the, the light of our sun, our, our biggest light source, is something that we just, we can't explain rationally. But, so, so I, I always feel that about light. It's, it's this thing that we adore and we just, you know, when, when the sun is out, we just want to go out and have the sun bathe us. Not me, because I get sunburnt in like three minutes. 
but you know people do that um, but we always equate it with life but I always but I also and I described this I think in one of the first videos of this project I also see light as this very menacing thing so I, I like it I like that it's it's relentless it's it's like this this thing this huge thing that we can't conceive that just you know it's it's just storming its way through and um, and because it does that because I see it as that as that very physical kind of entity um, whenever I can see the light traveling through something I'm like I have to paint that I can't paint the thing I have to paint the way light is just kind of like barreling through this this space um, and that's what I ended up painting but I, it was a struggle but it was a, it was a real struggle because when I saw you know the shapes when I saw the uh, hood and when I saw just her face kind of coming out the little bits of her portrait just coming out I was like yes I want that shape of the hood like I really want that shape of that hoodie and I then want this little kind of nose to be described coming out of the light this little upper lip and then the uh, little bit of the uh, bottom lip that's also projecting and coming into light I was like I want those three moments like I, I want to construct and develop and, and, and really try to model those three moments so it's almost like shade shade doesn't matter I'm just gonna take all that light and just push it forward and that's gonna be my painting and it's gonna be framed by this super exciting shape of, of, of her sweater of her hoodie and and I was like yeah I could do that but I could also speak about light, about this this enormity of light, about you know this this natural quality that happens in our universe, and that is you know it's almost hard to explain, hard to grasp, hard to paint even. And I think the painting was a struggle because I was trying to yes maintain the design of of my shapes, but also speak about this thing that is coming you know through those designs that doesn't acknowledge those designs, right? Super tough because I, I say, oh, I want to paint that nose. I want to model that nose and that upper lip. But I also say, you know, that's one side of my brain. But then the other side of my brain says, yeah, but you want to paint light and light doesn't care if it's called a nose or if it's called upper lip. Light is just there to just go through things, but it doesn't care about the things. It just cares about you know the going the direction in which it's going you know and and I thought that that was fascinating so this this painting in the end it was a struggle between trying to maintain a sense of composition through design but also through a shape that can't be contained which is light you know the 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 um, the role of light which I, I can't contain it in a little picture you know it's bigger than that it's just uh, there's enormity to it so uh, it was it was tough it was very weird I was very frustrated you know while I was painting I told Danny no nope, no nope. you know this is this is escaping me this is not what I want to paint and I tried to like reflect upon why why is it hard you know and, and I thought well you're not being disciplined you know you're not there's not a good relationship between the moment of her face and how that face is kind of nestled in this you know the space created by the uh, by the sweater by the hoodie and I was like ah I have to fight you know I have to fight for that I have to be way more disciplined and way more conscious about my drawing and the way I initially designed those shapes and I have to be patient and respect those choices that I put down um, but then I thought that that wouldn't close, you know, my light. If I wanted to feel like light is, is something that can't be apprehended, then what, what am I doing painting all these shapes? So that was my inner struggle. That was the toughest thing to do. And it was very cool because I reached, the, I reached that moment, and I think we've all been there, where we just say, you know what? The hell with this painting. I'm either going to just mess it up, F it up, I'm just gonna completely kill this painting or I'm gonna save it. There's no, you know, in between. There's no like, well, I can kind of touch it up here or here and just kind of, you know, uh, um, uh, hide these things that are uh, not really cool about the painting. 
Um, no, no, this was a very binary thing. I was like, okay, I'm ready for it. Like my body's ready for it. I was mentally there because you've been working for hours and you're like, this is, this is not there. It's just not there. And you're like, okay, this is make it or break it. Like we're either going to completely ruin it and I have to do another painting or we take this painting somewhere and we take it closer to what we want. And I mean, you know, I would have been super honest if I would have told you, and it sucked, and it was terrible, <laughs> and I ruined it, and that's what I'm gonna try to sell to you, a painting that is completely ruined. No, 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 I actually fought. And, and at, that, at those moments, Danny's super nice, and she's like, hey, how you doing? Oh, look at this, and I'm like, oh, don't speak to me. Don't, like, I'm super zen when I'm painting, I'd like to believe, but I'm not immune to being frustrated. Like, painting is tough, and it's, it's especially tough when you think you know where you're going and you think that your ability can take you there and it doesn't like it's it's so disheartening when you see how far you are from being a really kind of talented painter where you just don't have the tools to get you there and and she was speaking to me and this is kind of like my way of apologizing i guess this is an apology video <laughs> But she was speaking to me and I was like, no, you know, this is tough. This is a tough moment for me. Like I have to concentrate on this painting. And I was like, yeah, put your mind into it. Put all your effort into it. Uh, when I get like that, I can't even speak. Like I'm, I'm not even there. I have to like totally concentrate on trying to save this thing. And I got it to a place where I was like, hell yeah, hell yeah. Because I think I had to sacrifice my shapes you know, that attention to drawing um, or this overall quality of light that I, let, that, that I was so attracted to. And I was like, it's either or. It's, it, you know, I was, I was at that place where I was telling you guys, like, it's binary. It's you make it or break it. You, you either fight for your painting or you give up and you just ruin it. And I decided to fight and I had to choose what to fight for. And I was like, I'm going to fight for light. Fight for light. Hashtag. <laughs> and uh, I was like, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for that. And I'm going to push away the design. And I'm just going to concentrate on that light. On that light just not caring. You know, that light doesn't care what it's describing. It just doesn't care. It only cares about its path. And I was like, that's what I have to do. I have to give all that power to that light. And I started kind of blending stuff together. There's no, there's no real edges, softening edges everywhere. Just so that when I actually landed, and when, when the painting was grounded on the moments that uh, the portrait that would come into light, I was like, those are going to be important. Even though light is not trying to describe them, I'm actually going to try and fool it. <laughs> to see if I can describe those moments and make it about, and still make it about Danny, still make it about, you know, that moment of her portrait coming into light. But I'm still gonna be able to say, hell yeah, what I painted was light. You know, what I painted was this enormous power. Like I said, it's an abstract idea of light. So uh, I was very happy by the end. It was a struggle. I'm not gonna say it was a tough thing to, it was a tough, uh, it was an easy thing to paint. It was very tough. It was very, very tough. Uh, but I got somewhere and I liked it. You know, those paintings that we, that we don't give up on, you know, sometimes they're amazing. They, they are very grateful that we didn't give up on them. Doesn't happen often. Sometimes I don't give up on a piece of crap painting that gives nothing back to me. And I work on it and I, you know, labor over it and I'm just begging it to give me something back. I'm like, come on, I put hours into you, put days, months, you're not giving me anything. And the painting's like, no, forget it. I'm a lost cause. <laughs> Some paintings are like that. But once in a while you get to that painting that it just immediately answers back to, um, you know, all your hard work. And this, I think this was, a, this was one of them. So I was very happy. This, by the way, was painted on paper because I had like scraps of linen for the um, other three paintings, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday's painting. 
This one today was a piece of paper, a watercolor paper that I primed and it behaves a little bit differently, but I liked it. I, I thought it was very, it was very nice. It let me beat the crap out of it. So, so it, it's one of those um, moments of painting where I was grateful that I had a surface that was acknowledging that I could struggle and, and scrape and repaint and scrape and repaint. And uh, I, I was very happy. Anyways, that's the fourth, fourth painting of this week. Thursday, um, so we're good. We're only two days uh, till uh, we can actually see these um, these terrible paintings, uh, and we'll see if if they if or how they compare to all these ideas that you've um, you've sort of elaborated in your in your mind. So we'll see how that goes. Thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow with our final day on our spoken paintings week. Bye.